Hey guys, welcome back here to my channel. This is Flumina Pachis, and if this is your first time here, welcome. This is a channel dedicated to the gift of prophecy for releasing just words and messages that uh, the Lord will lay on my heart for the body of Christ. And so I just invite you to discern, uh, despise not prophecy, but discern it is what the Bible says. And so, yeah, I hope that the, the messages here today will be uh, hopeful and encouraging and provide vision for you to be set up for success in the next month, in the next liturgical season. And uh, yeah, let's get into this word. I have words for Advent for December. I have yeah, and, and maybe even like a little bit of a recap about November and what the body of Christ just went through. Uh, it's been a tough season, right? So let's talk about that. Yeah, so November was indeed a month of a lot of disillusionment. We saw people falling from grace um, in in the church. A lot of disillusionment, a lot of dismay, disorder, dis-ease. And uh, we have an event every month. If you're in the San Antonio area, every third Friday of the month, we, my prayer team, my, my friends, uh, we minister to the body of Christ. We have a whole praise and worship night, and we pray over people. And it's called El Shaddai. And... What I want to say is that what I saw there was so consistent with the the month of the prophetic words I released for the month of November, just how much the body of Christ was suffering. It was crazy. I mean, just the stories of people, um, how the enemy literally was trying to kill people, destroy them, cancel them. And so what I saw recently was the helmet of salvation. And it was in the form of like a helmet for war and it had like the red thing, the little red spikes all around it. And I thought it was so interesting. It was a very specific image. And so I asked the Holy Spirit, I, by the way, I saw this image twice in prayer and I should have released this immediately. But what I heard from the Holy Spirit was the body of Christ is being attacked in the head. The head. And what is the head? Your mind. It's it's your thought life. It's anxiety. It's stress. It's feelings of being overwhelmed. It's feelings of comparison. It's all sorts of thoughts that the enemy is throwing at us. And so I saw so many people that needed to be ministered out of uh, just addictions of people thinking they they, they had irrational thoughts. Even I was experiencing this. I had crazy thoughts like, and in a way now I'm looking back on it. Now I realize it, it was because I do intercede, you know, and, and I felt it was feelings of stress, blood pressure spiking. You know, I had none of that. Like I didn't have it. I don't have blood pressure, but I irrationally, irrationally believed that I did. And I don't, I bought a little blood pressure monitor and I don't and then I realized like why is that so strong in my spirit and I realized it was the body of Christ people struggling with stress people struggling with anxiety and worry like beyond rationale like I don't know how to explain it but yeah I had some people that I prayed over and it was like one over the other over the other uh, witchcraft was another big one too that we saw that I believe uh and I have seen it in visions where witches are actively sending these things to the body of Christ. They're casting these things over neighborhoods. And I saw it. I saw it when I was praying the rosary. And I see the the the, the work of the witches um, sending curses, you know, vexing people. So body of Christ, rise up and put on your helmet of salvation. The other word I hear is joy. Super Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Joy, joy is beautiful. It's supernatural. So receive joy, impart joy right now in the name of Jesus to every person under the sound of my voice. Joy, be loosed in the name of Jesus. And I want to read the word of God really quick. Isaiah 59, 17. He put on justice as his breastplate, salvation as a helmet on his head. He clothed himself with garments of vengeance, wrapped himself in a mantle of zeal. 
So joy, hope, put on hope. You know, these are things that we have to make decisions for. Like we have to make a decision that I'm going to have joy amidst my circumstances. I'm going to have thanksgiving amidst my circumstances. I have something to be grateful for. You know, we all do. Even when we don't want to be thankful, even when, you know, there's so many songs about praising in the middle of the storm, praising when it don't feel right, praising when you're in the in the the lion's den and just raising your hands up in praise. That has the power to send confusion to the camp of the enemy is what the Bible says. Sending confusion, you know, declaring war. Like what what I heard the Holy Spirit say is when I saw that vision, the Holy Spirit said, you don't just put on all these things. You actually put fear when you put it on. When you put on your helmet of salvation, you're you're scaring the enemy too. And so the, the Holy Spirit says uh, to remind you that you have so much power and authority when you make a decision to follow Jesus, when you make a decision to praise when it don't feel right. You're putting on the helmet of salvation. You're taking thoughts captive in the name of Jesus, setting them to the foot of the cross and asking for an impartation of the Holy Spirit. You know, okay, I send my worry to the foot of the cross. Lord, what do you want to give me in, in its stead? Because whatever goes out, something has to come in and you better be inviting the Holy Spirit in to fill that in. Because if it's not worry, it's going to be anxiety. It's going to be in all hundreds, thousands forms of fear. So love perfect love cast out fear so you know using the bible the word of god to defeat the the wiles the schemes of the enemy is what we have what what the lord is asking me to remind the body of christ okay so the next thing i want to talk about and i love talking about revival i feel like i talk about revival like every week but i'm obsessed with it because i am pining for revival i want revival to happen so much um, in our in our city so uh, the update I want to share is the about the new wine skin and while I was in Michigan and there was a Eucharistic procession um, within the congregation that we were a part of they uh, passed by me and the Holy Spirit gave me a, a vision like colored like beautiful beautiful actually I'd never in my life seen a wine skin before maybe I have I just didn't know what it was but I actually saw a wine skin uh, being stretched out and it took me a little while to understand because I didn't know the process of it but what the Lord began to explain to me is that the new wine goes through wine when it gets fermented it goes through a chemical process and as it's going through like the fermenting and all of that it releases gases and so as the gases move through the wine skin the wine skin will expand and it can't do that if it's not brand new it, it has like this once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to be expandable and so what i understood the 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 holy spirit was talking to me was how we are this is a time of reshaping some of you might be asking like man it's it's a it's been such a difficult time we've been going through challenging seasons uh, but if you have been spoken over as a new wineskin if you've been prophesied that you are if you believe uh, that God has told you that you are a new wine skin. Um, if you're bringing about the new wine in the church and in your community, then you are literally being reshaped. You're being reformed. You're being expanded uh, beyond your capacity to be able to hold this new wine. What is a new wine? It's a new spirit. It's a new creation. It's uh, a new heart within you. Um, so we have to allow this new wine, this gospel, to purify us, to form us, and to shape us. And I, I think that might have been obvious for a lot of people, but like I'm not a theologian, so I had to I had to like really spend time understanding that analogy. So um so that's that's why you know it hurts. It hurts to be expanded. It hurts to be taken to to form myself, to conform myself into this new image, this new shape. Um, being expanded beyond our conception of ability, like my ability to receive 
has to be deeper. My ability, and so that means like pruning you guys. It means like tearing my flesh apart, dying to myself um, for this new wine to be uh, able to breathe through me and to create that fragrance in the church, in my community, in my family. So that is the message I have about revival right now. Um, I don't know. I believe I'm like seeing it. We were uh, ministering at this uh, church in the South side and it was like literally everybody raised their hands. Um, this wonderful priest that uh, was ministering, everybody raised their hands. They received some, some form of healing. Like healing just broke out. Um, people were like resting in the spirit all over the place. People were just like laying hands on each other. I mean, it was the faith was there. And that's not everywhere. Like not everybody has that faith, but this church had faith. And so it was so easy to minister there. And it's a, it's amazing how hard it is to minister to a people that don't have uh, the gift of faith that, that aren't in a place to be able to receive. So anyway, uh, that is what is happening with revival. So let's go on to the next word. Okay, so next word is about Jacob and Esau and the blessing. Um, I am going to put the automatic chapters here on this video, so feel free if you need to uh, skip through some of these. I know I can be a little bit long-winded. I can't help it. So, okay, um, this dream that I recently had was so beautiful. And this is, I, I am moving away from like November and um, I am now getting deeper now into the next season, into this December, into this Advent season. And this is where uh, I really, the Lord had to, to deal with me and he wanted me to share this. This is really the biggest message I have right now. So the dream is I was seeing uh, this lady, her name is Dr. Sharon Stone. Some of you might know her. Uh, she is a prophetess of like really high accuracy level, really high anointing. Um, she prophesies to world rulers, nation leaders, and she's extremely accurate. Like her, her prophecies are crazy, amazing. Just God it works through her in, in, in an incredible way. So she was sitting on a bench and I saw her and I was just like, this is my opportunity. And I approach her and I'm like, Dr. Sharon Stone, I cannot let you leave here without you giving me a blessing. And so I knelt before her and I waited for her to, to bless me. And she came over to me and she just put her hands on top of me and she kept looking straight and she left. She walked away. And I just remember looking at her walking away feeling so crushed and feeling like I didn't get the blessing and just totally like looked over, passed over. And the security guard that was sitting next to her, she, he, whatever, I believe it was an angel in my interpretation that, that was an angel guarding her. He comes over to me and he explains, uh, Dr. Sharon Stone can't see anymore that well because she has glaucoma. And that's not true in the natural, right? She's fine. <laughs> I actually tuned right into her channel uh, that that very morning and, and got ministered to by a beautiful word from her. And so it clicked on me because of the words I had spoken and because of the, the blurry vision that this is the story of Jacob and Esau. And Jacob felt like he didn't get the blessing right and so jacob fought the angel he wrestled the angel to to be um to give him a blessing or what does it say it's in genesis 33 32 verse 28 27 it says but jacob said i will not let you go until you bless me what is your name the man asked he answered jacob then the man said, You shall no longer be spoken of as Jacob, but as Israel, because you have contended with divine and human beings and have prevailed. So, my friends, Jacob was a man who contended. Uh, Esau sold his birthright for a cup of soup, whatever it was, lentils. And the Bible says in Micah, 
that God hated Esau, but Jacob he loved. Why? Because Jacob had the blessing. Jacob fought for words. And as I was praying, as I was praying, you guys, the Lord said to me, tell them, do not be dismayed, but you may, is what the Lord said. In this coming season, you can contend with the Lord. This is about wrestling for the promises, for the prophecies in your life, for God's promises over your life. You know, sometimes we, we feel like God has made a promise to us in certain respects and we're believing God for stuff, but it's almost like we, we, we want to wait for God to do it for us. And the Lord is saying, you need to, you need to break through. You need to fight. You need to wrestle these things. And so do not be dismayed, but you may, M-A-Y, you may, you may contend, you may wrestle, you may fight for what is yours. You may fight to take the land. So whatever that means for you, what wasn't available in November, what you felt that the enemy was taking from you, that you felt that your circumstance did not look like that prophetic word, that thing that you're praying about, that, that you feel God has already said a yes to, but you're not seeing it and you're doubting, the Lord says to fight. The Lord says that you can contend with the Lord. You can contend with it. And the Bible says about John the Baptist, Jesus says that uh, the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. The kingdom of God has suffered, the kingdom of, what is it? The kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So it is yours. Uh, we have to fight in this, in this coming season. We have to learn how to fight. Um, and learn what was it about Jacob that the Lord loved. Jacob knew how to be a giver. Jacob knew how to offer, knew how to give from his heart. Jacob knew how to make restitution and amends with his brother. Later on, it says that Jacob uh, sent a, a large portion of his like flock and inheritance to Esau to make up for what he did. Jacob was the deceiver. And what's also interesting is that Isaac was uh, Isaac was blind, right? So Isaac lacked discernment. Isaac lacked discernment. And, um, you know, we, we talk about all the senses, the spiritual senses, the touch. He touched Jacob. He felt like Esau. He um, uh, smelled like Esau. So that deceived him. The only thing, and, and he could kind of hear, he couldn't tell from the voice very well, Isaac, if it was Jacob or Esau. But, um, but indeed, he gave the wrong blessing. So anyway, I think this story, wherever it fits for you, can be understood from different perspectives. Uh, but what I understood and what the Holy Spirit said to me was, um, it's time to make an offering. It's time to fight, you know. Uh, I learned how to prophesy from Prophet Tommy Araimi over at Rig Nation. And he always has a saying, he says, prophets do not declare outcomes. They declare God's will. And what that means is that it shifts the responsibility of declaring outcomes to the church, to the bride, to the body of Christ, to make it happen, you know. God's will is God's will, but if you don't war, you know, we don't wait for prophecy. We war for prophecy to receive what is ours uh, for the taking. There's so much to be had that is left on the table, but we lack the vision. We lack the spiritual warfare tools, the strategy, the high ground to fight for our blessings. So that that was an exciting war, uh, word from the Lord for the month of December. Uh, to to go ahead and proceed and so here's what's coming for December my message really for Advent as well so you you understand that we are to war we are to
fight, we are to declare, to speak to our problems, and tell it, tell not God our problems, but tell our problems how big our God is. You know what I'm saying? That is a, a, a great segue, actually, to the next word. And the Lord said that where there was disorder and dismay in November, December shall be a time of divine order. And so I saw, I cannot express to you how much the angelic forces are on like super charge. They are establishing structures. They're already doing this. They're already establishing structures for us. And the Lord said, get excited for them for Advent. This is an Advent message. We are being mobilized. Okay. I heard the word mobilization. What does that mean? Uh, just a, a brief definition here. According to Britannica, it says in war or national defense organization of armed forces of a nation for active military service in time of war or other national emergency. In its full scope, mobilization includes the organization of all resources of a nation for support of the military effort. So if we can apply that metaphorically to the spirit realm, which actually I would, I would prophesy there will be some level of natural mobilization. I mean, we're already in war. We're in times of war. But the body of Christ is going to be mobilized. How? Let's go to the best example. My favorite example of mobilization in the, in the Bible is uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, uh, starting here. Um, yeah, verse 1, where it says that uh, the Lord is promising uh, Joshua. Remember, Joshua is like a brand new leader. Moses just died. Joshua probably doesn't feel like he has a respect of the people around him. He doesn't know if they're going to obey him. He doesn't know if God's going to like be speaking to him the way that him and Moses. I mean, come on, Moses, like it's a big, some big shoes to fill. And so here's Joshua just kind of like in the, this is the the beginning of the book of, of Joshua. This is where it starts. And the Lord is talking to him and he says, be firm, be steadfast. He says it like, I have that underlined three times at least. Do not fear. It says in verse nine, I command you be firm and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. And so I prophesy to you right now that the Lord's angels are establishing structures. The Lord's moving the chess pieces around in our favor. And it, it talks about here in chapter 1, Joshua, just to give you more, more uh, perspective here. Afterward, you may read, uh, he's giving them instruction. He's giving the tribes of Israel all sorts of instruction about what they are to do uh, to prepare to take the land. And he sends people, spies, out. And, and this is a part of Rahab's story. But then in chapter 3, it says preparations for crossing the Jordan. This is their first big cross. This is actually what <laughs> sends the, the scare tactic that, that goes forth that precedes the Israelite people. This is the wonder that God performs for them. Just like Moses, he did it for Joshua. He, uh, uh, God tells them, uh, tells, tells Joshua to tell the people three days. Uh, it says in verse five, Joshua also said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will prepare wonders among you. And he directed the priests to take up the Ark of the Covenant and go on ahead of the people. And so they did. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know I am with you as I was with Moses. Oh, gosh. So, um, I believe that's, that's one of the best examples of being a mobilized people, taking the land. Uh, Advent is a time of also preparation. And so the Lord says, you are going to be mobilized. I'm going to move you in the position that you need to be moved into. I'm going to put the right people around you. 
And also, I the Lord showed me this steering wheel. I don't forget what it's called. The one that's for the ship. And it, and, and I understood the ship represented the church, the body of Christ. And the Lord is saying he is releasing direction. So we're going to have direction and we're going to have guidance and we're going to have resources. The Lord is going to give us resources ahead of time. Uh, he's going to uh, put us in places that is going to give us the advantage. The Lord is going to perform wonders among us, before us. And these wonders are going to precede us so that when we take Jericho, Jericho is al already going to have heard. Um, and, and this is part of the, the battle. This is how we also fight that Jericho, the people there, they heard what God had done for the, for the people crossing the Jordan. I mean, this was impossible. And so by nature of that, they were dismayed. They were dismayed that God was with them and not with Jericho. And so that's half the battle. They already believed they had lost the battle. So that was actually part of their win. All they had, to, all the people had to do was cross the Jordan. God was literally doing everything for them. So consecrate. This is a time of consecration. This is a, a time of learning how to contend. What does that mean? What does it mean to contend with the Lord? It means you have to wrestle. It means that you give and you take and you, you, you negotiate even. Um, Hannah. Hannah wanted a baby so bad, right? And she ended up having Prophet Samuel. But Hannah didn't get her breakthrough until she contended with the Lord. She said, okay, well, we'll give you this baby to serve you and to serve here in the temple. Hannah knew that if she gave her best offering, her only son, that God would bless her with more. And indeed he did. He gave her more, more, more babies. So... How are we going to wrestle for the thing that we're believing God for? Um, I believe Advent is going to be a time to sit still, to pray, to make time, to consec consecrate yourself, to sanctify yourself, and speak, declare to your circumstance. Be mobilized. Be positioned. Look at the people around you. You're already set up for success. In Jesus' mighty name, I release that over you, and I pray that you have an incredible, life-changing December and Advent, um, and I'll probably come on here later and, and talk about my Advent story, so I hope that encourages you and edifies the church, and God bless you. Hey.